Hi friends. Today I am going to create, um, I wanted to paint another one of these little flowers I saw yesterday on my trip to the botanical gardens. It's called a protea and I actually painted this one in some purples and violets and quin magentas, all those beautiful colors. The one I actually saw, which I will uh, share in a photo with you as well, is uh, was actually some oranges and a little bit of pinks. And the other reason why I wanted to do this tutorial is just to show you, I love the process of working in layers. So starting with this very light layer in the background here, which just means uh, it has more water in it. So the value is lighter. And then working up to my darkest values as the painting begins to dry and adding in some harder lines. So my foundation I paint first is very washy and light. And then I let that dry a little and I come in with my mid value. And then from there, I end up with my darkest value. That's my one of my favorite ways to paint. Uh, so let me show you here, grab a piece of paper. So the value, always have a piece of scrap paper available so you can test your values. And when you finish your painting, you can make sure you have all three values in here. So I've got my lightest value here, which was my base uh, glazing. And then I've got some lighter or mid values. And then I go in at the end when it's mostly dry and I create my darkest values. So that creates a lot of depth. And what I find is when I paint in these layers, it does just that. It really creates some beautiful depth in my paintings and uh, interest. So it looks like these darker little lines are out in front and then you've got this light wash or light glazing which i started with and it has um, kind of sinks in so what i might even do in here before i start our painting is the leaves have dried but they're all somewhat similar values although i've got some lighter ones is here in here i might go in if i wanted to just to show you an example and I'm using my My Lang palette today. Um, I love Winsor Newton, but it can be a little pricey to do as much painting as I'm doing. So I've really researched and tried out lots of paints. Um, and my two favorites are the Meaden paint set and these My Lang. I love them because for my wonderful beginners, they have lots of colors pre-mixed. So you don't have to worry and get overwhelmed with that. And this little palette, um, is a, it's under $20. Uh, you, you, I will tell you up front, you cannot buy, rebuy the little um, pans, but you can refill them. So, and they're, it's pretty inexpensive. So for me, I'd probably just buy a new set, um, but I have been asked that. I'm also going to be using on the painting when I start my eight velvet touch round absolutely you can use your degados um, this is a good beginner set if you don't want to invest in the princeton which can be anywhere from eight dollars up for one brush and you can get this whole degado set which has beautiful round uh, bellies and the tips are really great i've been using these for about six months and i love them and you get a whole set for i want to say maybe even under $15. So that's a great starter set to begin with if you don't want to invest in individual brushes. It also gives you the opportunity because I believe in this set there's about 11 brushes, something like that, and it can give you an idea of the different sizes. Um, where if you commit to an eight round, you know, you may like something bigger or smaller. So Degato is a really a great little brush set for the beginner. I'm also painting on, as you know, if you've been following my favorite Artisto pads. And again, for the beginner or intermediate, these are a 140 pound cold press. And they're wonderful because I have stacks and stacks of these and I label them for the seasons. I label them for maybe one whole little Artisto pad 
is just all fall flowers or fall color palettes. So for me, that's really handy to have them in one place. You've got this wonderful spiral bounder, uh, spiral bind on the side, and it's perforated if you did want to remove one of these, but it's got a great texture. And again, just so I think fantastic for the beginner. I've tried a lot of student grade papers and of course, Arches is absolutely fabulous, 100% cotton, but I really feel like these are just such a great quality with the um, texture and they hold up to water really well. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to grab my um, Artisto pad here and I've got my little palette for me I like these big mixing wells so this palette is wonderful for me because I can still hold it in my hand too and it's great quality as you can hear that Meaden, I can't say enough their ceramic products are great I've got my two wells of water one to wash one to rinse another beautiful meat and product and i have tried a lot of products you guys and i think that's it so let's go ahead and get started um i'm going to start with my eight velvet touched and i'll link all of those down below in the description if you're interested in any of those uh, everything i typically link is available through amazon and really easy to order um, I'm going to use my little spray bottle to just wet my paints, activate them. I usually do that before I start. Okay, so I'm going to start with that light wash first. So I'm going from light to dark. And light just means I have more water added in versus pigment. So this is probably 90% water, 10% pigment. This is maybe 75, 25, 75 pigment, 25 water. And this one is, I would say 95% because you have to have some water pigment. So I'm gonna try and include all of these in my painting. Let's go ahead and wet our brush. And I've got my paper towel here just to dab off if I need to. And I'm going to pick up my, let's see, let's start with a CAD yellow, which is the same in Winsor Newton or the Mylang palette. And again, I want to start with that light value. So quite a bit of water versus pigment. Now that doesn't mean what you're picking up and painting with has a lot of water as far as volume in it. It just means the ratio of water to paint is 80% water, 20% paint something like that. You're still going to dab off your brush because you don't want to go into your painting with a lot of too much water. For the beginners, that can be hard to control. So let's go ahead and create kind of this egg shape almost. I'm going to lay down my paints and very pale. And I'm leaving some white space in here too. So just doing something like this, using the point of my brush to create some of the little spikes coming out on the edges, but we're gonna do that more when we add the darker pigments. Now with wet and wet, you wanna work somewhat fast so you can get that wet mix. And as you can see again here, just pointing out, I'm leaving white space in here. So I've got that layered. Now I wanna go in with just a little bit darker value of my yellow and start touching in here, just like that. Maybe even a tiny bit of orange. And we're gradually building these layers, which is what I just appreciate so much and love so much about watercolors 
because I'm building layers. So I'm adding orange onto yellow and then I'll eventually add on a darker orange, maybe even a little bit of cad red. And the colors underneath are going to show through because watercolors are so transparent. Now I just did a drip there, but that's okay. So as you see, I'm adding in, building my layers. I'm adding in more orange. And now I might pick up just a tiny bit of cad orange. Now that's too thick. I very rarely see how that doesn't move. I'm going to add some water to it because I want my watercolors to have flow to them. But I'm gradually, like I said, building up these layers. And just dabbing my brush here, kind of creating these little petals. Just like that. And it's coming out rather soft because this is wet and wet. So there we go. Now, while it's wet, I actually okay. want to go in and add in um, a few more petals down here. So I'm wetting my brush, removing some of that paint, and I'm going to go in and pick up that yellow again and just come out here point press, point press, and get some petals coming out of the bottom. So I'm laying my brush down, resting my hand on my paper, and point press and come in towards the center. Point press, widen out my brush, and come out. Point press and come up to that point again. Point press, just like that. Point press. There we go. Okay, so now I've got kind of this cup shape, but almost like an egg or almost like a porcupine. Not porcupine, a um, artichoke or something like that. There you go. It's coming up and it has these little rough edges. Now, <clears throat> to work wet in wet, you do have to work a little bit fast. I will say that. Mm -hmm. I'm adding in some cad orange and just a tip of my brush and maybe a little cad red. And now I'll come in and just creating some little dabs. just with the tip of my brush and going in a little bit more cad red and cad orange. So we're just constantly building these layers. Look how pretty that is. And while it's wet and wet, we're going to get these beautiful blends. So I'm increasing the amount of pigment dabbing in to my painting, increasing the pigment so it's darker and darker. There we go. And my paint is also drying. So I'm getting <clears throat> some more uh, defined lines because the le less wet it is, the less spread you're going to get. Just come up here. Maybe just put a few of these dabbing with my brush like that. I don't want to cover every inch. I'm going to rinse my brush and actually pick up, lift some little highlights in here like that. Again, that creates that depth. There you go. Now I'm going to let this dry just a tiny bit. And meanwhile, I'm going to go in with my, in Windsor Newton, um, it's sap green. In your My Lang palette, it's going to be uh, tree green. 
and I'm actually even going to use a little bit of that hooker's green which is the same also in Windsor Newton and let's just come down through the center here and create our stem now I want that blend right here for me I love that okay And maybe I'll even add in a little bit of hooker's green. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, olive green. Just to create some darkness. There we go. So play with your greens and figure out like which ones you like. So I'm just giving it some depth here. Now I'm going to wash and dry my brush and drag out some of these lines with really just these little flicks like that. So there you go, it's kind of blending. Now I'm purposefully letting that dry a bit and I'm gonna go in, let's see what this color looks like. Um, let's try, let's see what that would look like. Yeah, I think that could be kind of pretty, kind of going out on a limb here. So in my My Lang palette, <clears throat> this is Violet Red. I don't know, I'm a little nervous about that color. Let's, maybe we should stick with our Cad Red. So picking up that Cad Red, and now I'm gonna go in and start defining some more. but yet I don't want this to be completely dry because I want this to spread. Doing some dabs just to get that kind of pointy feel that I noticed in these flowers. I thought was really pretty. Something like that. There you go. And now I'm just taking a wet brush and just going around the edges a little bit. A wet, clean brush. And that creates also some depth. So let's add a few leaves here, going back to my hooker's green, my olive green, whatever green you like. These oranges in that are um, pretty warm, so you don't want to get any too much of a cool bright green. We want to stick with kind of the warm greens. So let's just create a leaf here. I'm going to point, press, and open up my brush like that. Pick up a little bit more, point, press, point, press, there we go. Just using the tip of my brush there. And then let's maybe create a leaf here, point, press, point, press, there you go. Don't be afraid to lay a leaf over your flower that's maybe sticking out. Point, press, and then just using the point to come down on the other side. Point, press, so maybe that's a leaf in the back. And then let's lighten up the value mm -hmm. of our green and create one sticking out in the background. Point, press. So that one's a little bit lighter. And we can go even lighter by rinsing off your brush some more, adding more water. And that pulls that um, leaf into the background. So the, this is a really good, fun painting for those layers. I've got my light layer I've got my mid layer, and then I've got my dark layer, which is just 
light value, mid value, dark value. And I might even add in, let's warm that up a bit and maybe add in a tiny bit of brown in the center there. So you could use your burnt sienna. Now this is already dried, so I'm not gonna get a huge spread here, but I could help it out. Something like that. And you might even get some blooms, which is fine. And then drag that brown down into your leaf. Oops, Let's see if we can pick that up, it's okay. And as soon as my flower is pretty dry, which you'll know because it'll be neutral as far as temperature, it won't be um, cold. And let's go into the leaf first. So I'm going to pick up quite a strong value of paint, which just means it's probably 90% paint, 10% water. Still movable. It just has that ratio. And I'm gonna go in and create a couple dark leaves. So I could even darken up that value a bit. Something like that. There you go. There you go. Okay, so I think that's quite interesting. I feel like I want to add a little light colored leaf in the background sticking through here. So there you go. And once this is dry, I'm going to go in, I'm going to try and do it right now and add in some pretty dark value of red. Now, let it dry first. I'm gonna kinda of go in here because I don't have the time to wait for it. But we're just using the tip of our brush. And we're making little dabs. Just like that. So these have a harder line, which makes them come out in front. We might put a few up here. Let's get a little bit more of that cad red. So working in layers like this just brings so much depth to your paintings. And it's so beautiful because you're creating these darker colors, but the colors behind it really show up nicely. So I think that's pretty good. I mean, we honestly could go in. Let's try some cad yellow in a darker value. Don't want to ruin this. Yeah, I don't want to add too much of that. I think that's good. So there you go. I hope you give this a try and practice working in those layers. I, I feel it's so beautiful and gives so much depth to your painting, starting with that light wash in the background and then going in and putting in some mid values as your painting dries. Give it a little bit of time to dry so it just doesn't all spread into uh, one color and then wait for that to dry a little bit and go in with even yet your darker values. Remembering that watercolors dry much softer and lighter. So you may have to do this a few times. And then your leaves, the same thing. I use some darker value leaves with that. Uh, to make those leaves, I did the point of my brush, holding my brush a little bit horizontal but to activate that point, you want us to stay a little bit more upright and point, then pushing into our brush, opening up the belly, pulling and coming up to a point like that. Let's do that one more time. Point, press, keep moving and pull up to the point. So there you go, something like that. 
and you can always outline or create the other side. Typically, if I create the other side, I tuck in a little bit sooner. So point and I might end right there. Or even point, press, point, and end shorter here. So I won't go all the way down to the base of my leaf. Point like that. That's a really pretty leaf too. All right, I hope that was fun for you guys and just an easy little tip, I think, to create some real interest and depth in your painting. And, um, you know, you can really play here and have fun and get used to working with those values. Create these little value charts um, when you have time. It's really going to give you a nice um, practice of how much water you need and how much pigment you need and the different um, colors that you can get. All right, everybody, I will link everything. Make sure, um, you know, for a beginner, these, again, artisto pads are great. I just love them. Can't say enough about them. <coughs> Not affiliated with them. I just love them. And um, I will list all my brushes and things. So happy painting. I might create a tutorial for this one, a little um, kit rather that you can just download their download digitals I also do the the um originals and the last thing i want to mention i just created a private facebook page called debbie walker art special edition and it's specifically for you following me on youtube so you can get on there it gives us a place to uh, share our paintings because on youtube we can't can't really do that um, so I get emailed a lot of paintings and I thought how nice it would be to have this little group on Facebook that we could share our paintings and, um, comment and inspire each other. So there we go. I will see you all soon. Happy painting friends. And let's just keep creating together. Okay. Bye-bye.